studies course that was rejected by the state. There's been a lot of criticism of that move, uh, people saying, you know, this is exactly what we were fearing with the individual freedom bill. I don't know if you or the commissioner could maybe expand a little bit more about... Sure, I mean, I think, uh, so, um, you know, as you know, uh, in the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history, all the important things. That's part of our core curriculum. This was a separate course on top of that for advanced placement credit. And the issue is we have guidelines and standards in Florida. Uh, we want education, not indoctrination. If you fall on the side of indoctrination, we're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do this course. So when I heard it didn't meet the standards, I figured, yeah, they may be doing seriously. It's way more than that. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. And so we're on, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. We believe in teaching kids uh, facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them. When you try to use black history to shoehorn in queer theory, uh, you are clearly trying to use that uh, for political purposes. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. I have a question. Have any AP studies that um, course parts have been listed as concerning as a topic of movement for black lives? Can you describe what about that is concerning that some people are calling it? Is that with the abolishing prisons? Is that part of the – so if you read actually what's in there, they're advocating things like abolishing prisons. Now, now that's, a, that's a radical political position. You're free to take that in your own life. I don't think very many people would think that that would actually work. Um, but how is that being taught as fact to be able uh, to do that? And I also think it's not fair to say that somehow abolishing prisons is somehow linked to, like, black experience, that that's what black people want. I don't think that's true at all. I think they want law and order, just like anybody else wants law and order. So that is more of ideology being used under the guise of history, and we want to do... Uh, history, and that's what our standards for, for black history are. It's just cut and dried history. You learn all the basics, you learn about the great figures, and you know, I view it as American history. I don't view it as separate history. You know, we have history, it, a lot of different shapes and sizes, people that have participated uh, to make the country great, uh, people that have stood up when it wasn't easy, and they all deserve uh, uh, to be taught. But abolishing prisons, being taught to high school kids as if that's somehow a fact, no, that, that's, that's not appropriate. The Parental Rights and Education Act, which some people say is unfairly nicknamed, don't say gay. I've interviewed Floridians, and over the holidays I interviewed Texans and people from uh, Ohio. And they're under the impression that the law applies to all schools and all grades. But when you read the bill, the bill says it only applies to not teach gender identity or sexual orientation from kindergarten to third grade. And when I tell these people this, Mostly even liberals agree, oh yeah, if it's only elementary school, that's fair. But a lot of people are under the impression there's all grade levels, all well, schools. Look, no, so for the commissioner and you, do you feel this poor messaging from your office or from the legislature telling the people the real facts about the law so people don't get confused? I don't think it's poor messaging. I mean, I think you have corporate outlets, media outlets, who push agendas. And in Florida, everyone was very clear on it. I mean, I mean, some may not be, but I mean, I think the election results were a good determination that those narratives, those false narratives, were rejected by Floridians because we've been getting them for years and years. Everything we do is a false narrative. And then a couple of weeks later, months later, people just move on. And I like, yeah, you know what? The governor was right on that when he said that. So that's just kind of been the pattern. How corporate media projects this outside of our borders was just not something that was necessarily as pertinent to us because we're governing this state here. Uh, but I think that it's instructive to um, look at that element and then ask yourself, any of the stuff we're doing with, like, you know, the, the schools you're doing, you're talking about this AP course, uh, if they're telling you something that seems like, wow, that seems a little off. Do you think that they're telling you the full story or do you think that they're trying to shade that in a way to advance their agenda? And I would say nine times out of 10, you know, they're shading it to try to advance whatever agenda they may have. And so that's just the nature of it. But, um, you know, we're going to continue to do what's right. And I think one of the things people can count on me for is that if you're looking for me to stand up for you, 
I am not going to be swayed by false media narratives. Some people feel that, uh, that part of the reason why your office or legislature has not messaged this out clearly to the people is because you want to appeal to the crowd that are really, really anti-gay. It has really nothing to do with that. First of all, having any sexual content in elementary school is inappropriate. It's wrong. And it, yes, I mean, I think the gender ideology is something that is very problematic when you have very young kids and if you have a teacher saying, well, what gender would you like to be? No, that is not what that, these are impressionable kids. You're trying to tell them that somehow they can just switch to be, to be a different gender. So that's wrong. So I think some of it can be incredibly harmful. And, uh, but at the end of the day, it's not about individuals, adults, whatever. It's about what are you teaching to very young kids? Should we be focusing on gender ideology or should we be focusing on math and reading and all the things that are really, really important? And I think most people think we should be focusing on the latter, uh, not the former. That's just the reality. And look, underlying all these, these kind of uh, political back and forth on education. It's not just K-12, it's also higher ed we see it. What is the purpose of our education system, whether it's an elementary school or whether it's a public university? Uh, some say the purpose of it is to train students in a certain worldview, uh, to use schools as an instrument of what they consider social justice and social change. There's others, which Florida believes, that it's really about education in the classical sense. It's about the pursuit of truth. It's about teaching kids how to think. It's about presenting facts to them and then letting them draw conclusions. And so there's a, there's a, a disagreement in our society about what the purpose is. I can tell you most universities in this country have gone in the direction of using education for ideology and for, for politics, and they've moved away from education in the classical sense. We believe in, in that education as a classical sense. We believe it can be liberating for people uh, to go through that. And how tired is it to sit there and think that just imposing some rote talking points from whatever the political skirmishes of the day are, that that is a lasting form of education? I don't think it is at all. But when you're talking about things that are larger, issues that, that have enduring relevance, you know, those are things students will be able to carry with them for, for the rest of their lives. And so that's how we're approaching all of these issues. And I think if you start from that foundation, then something like gender ideology for a second grader, of course you wouldn't do that. That's political. That's an agenda. You know, that's not something that is really going to stand the test of time. Okay, guys, thanks so much. Take care.